Hello, good peoples of the internet. Today I have Lisa Mitten with me, who is a self-image coach, and I can't wait to find out how we can improve our self-image with her help and what might be the underlying issues. Welcome to the podcast, Lisa. Thank you, Mike. Thank you so much for being here. I'm really excited to be part of your podcast today. Please introduce yourself to the audience and tell us a little bit more about what you do and how did you come to do what you do? It's a little bit about me. I'm Irish. I have been living in the US for the last two years, but I'm now back in Ireland for a while. I started working as a coach about three years ago was when I started really doing my in-depth training. And then I launched my business approximately two years ago. I work primarily with women who want to overcome their lack of self-belief. They would like to improve their confidence. They want to improve their self-image so that they can really progress through their career and progress in their personal life, feeling good about themselves, really embracing who they are, having confidence in what they're doing. Get into this field, like, what was your motivation? My motivation was based on my own experience. I struggled a lot with my, my self-confidence and my self-belief. I always compared myself to other people. I never felt really that I was up to scratch with others. I felt others knew more than me, others were better than me. I played small a lot of the time, hid myself, and I got so up living like that. I guess I had a lot of imposter syndrome as well. I always believed that I got to where I was at, whether it was in my personal life or my career, simply because I just got lucky or nobody had discovered the real me. That becomes extremely exhausting, Mike. And I started to do, through my own experiences, I got fed up of myself and wanted to get out of my own way. So I started doing a lot of personal development. I realized all these beliefs that I had were just beliefs. They're not facts. They're not true. Just a belief that got imprinted in my subconscious when I was young. I didn't know how to shake it off. I just assumed that it was for real. It must have taken a lot for you to get out of your comfort zone and to do things that wasn't normal or regular for you because if you live for a certain amount of time that way to become somebody different it takes a lot of expanding and getting out of your comfort zone how did you deal with that challenge to the outside world i looked like i was competent i traveled a lot on my own i had quite an extensive career and various different jobs and roles. So I could put myself out there and I could do things and everybody around me thought I was super confident, but inside I was really crumbling. It was so stressful for me because I was doing all these things, but I was doing it with no self-belief. So when I realized that this was really unhealthy, I decided to kind of investigate into what's wrong here because I know I am capable of going to a certain point, but I just felt so crippled inside with lack of confidence. That's when I decided to explore all of this and I realized that this is all about doing the things that you want to do but doing them with self-belief and embracing who you are and knowing that I was okay and that I was actually achieving something for myself. So you go to the point where you drew the line and you said you had enough of living this way and you wanted to transform. What helped you on your journey? On this transformation? Definitely the support that I got. So from my therapist, I tended to get involved in toxic relationships. Now it takes two to tango because I was insecure. I was attracting the wrong people. And that was probably the tipping point for me. When I got out of my marriage, I decided I really don't want to continue like this. So I found very good therapists and very good coaches for myself. And when I found the right person or people for me who allowed me to see and understand what was going on here, that's when the light bulb went on. And I realized I am the creator. It's nobody else's fault. I've just got to change my mindset. I've got to change my outlook here. But that doesn't come just by you deciding you're going to do this and doing it on your own. You've got to have the support of people around you who support you. They give you the tools. They give you that little push that you need in order for you to take that step and move forward. That must have taken a lot to um, come to terms with and to cultivate and, and to start changing. Once you went through this journey, you decided to go and help others get through this journey. The main turning point for me was with my career. So I used to change career a lot. So the people who know me know that, you know, Lisa's famous for having many different <laughs> career types. And everybody used to applaud me for that. You say, Lisa, you're so great. You dip your toe in so many different things. But the reason I did that was because as soon as I was in a career for any length of time and it started to get, I started to get out of my comfort zone, I would change career. I wanted a career that meant no stress. There was no getting out of my comfort zone. I could do everything 
perfectly and not have to worry about it. And then I realized this is not good. Got to stick with things. You've got to build on what you've got and you've got to get out of your comfort zone to grow and develop. And I was working in the corporate world. I became a team leader and I became what they called a counselor for some members in my team. And I realized that I love working with them, showing them and supporting them how they could really be great at what they did, how they could embrace the role, how they could grow and develop in the role, become really confident in what they were doing. I realized I actually have a talent for this and I love this. And that's how I got into coaching. Which kind of coaching certificate? certification did you take? How did you obtain the knowledge to become able to help others? A lot of it is personal growth and development and realizing like, so when I was in the corporate world, I would have obtained certificates through corporate. The rest of it then would have been through the leadership training that I undertook myself. And then I went on to coach leadership through the organization that I trained with. I became a coach with them. And that was hugely beneficial because coaching with the leadership really gives you the guidance and also the confidence as a coach when it comes to emotional intelligence training. So that would have been a huge part of my emotional intelligence training. So how long have you been doing this for now? I have been working solely for myself for the last two years. That's remarkable. That's really fantastic. How does it feel like being independent? A little bit scary, you know? <laughs> I'm human. I'm like everybody. I sometimes think, am I on the right track? But I believe that once you feel it in your heart, when you're serving, you can't really be going too far wrong. It sounds very rewarding. What was the greatest transformation that you have seen in your clients? It's always just their ability to embrace who they are. And one thing that stands out for me is that they can use their voice now. They're not worried about saying the wrong thing, looking bad or looking stupid. They are now able to stand up, whether it's in their career or in their personal life, they can they can express their opinion. It's not about being right. It's not about being wrong. It's just, you know what, it's okay for me to give an opinion, whether maybe some people might agree, some people may not agree, but that's okay. It's an opinion and it's okay to express it and it's okay to use your voice. And I see that now with a lot of my clients, that's the part that they really want to work on. And when they overcome that, they really feel the results of the coaching. What would you advise someone who is going through this personal transformation journey? What would be the top three tips that you would recommend them to do? My first thing is just trust yourself. The second thing, take baby steps, step by step by step. If you can do one thing each day that brings you closer to where you want to be and you know, don't give up on yourself. It sounds like really good advice. I think that's uh, so true for other areas of life as well, whatever you might be going through, just to break it down to chunk size or bite size steps and be persistent, right? That's uh, so very important with whatever you do. Yeah. I interview a lot of coaches. And one thing that is common, coaching is always about transformation. Transformation is uncomfortable, just like you said. You have to just deal with it in the interest of a better life and a better future. It's an investment. It's a huge investment. And one question I ask my clients before they come on board, yes, you're entering into this transformational coaching for yourself, but who else, who else does it benefit in your life? The answer right. is always, well, everybody, it's going to benefit everybody, my partner, my children, my family, my colleague. It affects everybody around us. It affects every part of our life in a very positive way. Who do you prefer to work with, Lisa? I work with all adults, but it tends to be that I've just sort of naturally attracted women. That doesn't mean that I don't work with men. Of course, I'm open to working with everybody because I'm, you know, who I am. I'm teaching from my own experience and women can maybe relate to me in a stronger manner. Okay, so you work with women, uh, any specific profession or any area of life? It would tend to be sort of women aged between late 30s into like, early 50s who really want to move forward in their career in a confident manner but they, and they also may want to embrace their personal life maybe they want healthier better stronger relationships with themselves and with the people around them it's interesting that you mentioned career and this was the first time you mentioned it throughout this interview maybe for the viewers i would like to clarify even your career change starts with you everything begins with you you need to be, be in the right place before you can make any kind of transformation whether that is in a relationship or a career or just uh, for self-improvement reasons. It is a fundamental pillar to help the person grow before they can move into maybe a more challenging role or a 
better fitting. Yes, absolutely. Everything starts with ourselves. So when we have a good, healthy, strong relationship with ourselves, we can develop our career and we can develop our personal life. Because at the end of the day, your career is a relationship. We can go so far in our careers, we can go so far in our personal life. But if we don't have that, like the best relationship you can have is the one you have with yourself. And then after that, everything else really falls into place. And that allows everything else to be so much easier. So true. With these personal changes, what kind of transformations you saw in people? Like what happened after they went through your program? Did they change jobs? Did they change partners? Well, tell us some interesting stories. One lady that I was coaching, everything around her started to change. Her business really started to grow, her self-belief. The things that would have really upset her and bothered her, whether it was with maybe friends or ex-partner, it didn't have the same effect on her. She was much more able to manage those situations. She was responding rather than reacting, realizing that what's going on around me here is not personal to me. When she really kind of got that understanding and had that realization that this has actually not got anything to do with me. So she was changing her response. Everything else just started to fall into place for her because she's in a much more relaxed space. She's got peace of mind. Another lady that I was working with just blossomed and bloomed in her career. I seen nothing like it, how she developed. It was like she was a flower that was closed over in the corner. And then after 16 weeks, you just see this flower completely blossom. Her feedback that she got from her colleagues was incredible. She was telling me about the feedback. She said, my colleagues have literally been coming to me saying, wow, what have you been doing? <laughs> this is incredible. And she didn't really see it. We tend not to see the changes ourselves. Things don't sure. happen overnight. It's gradual changes. We don't see them until we sort of reflect back. But mm -hmm. the people around around us really see how we're growing and we're developing a client of mine in her workplace she felt like the people around her were quite toxic and she felt difficult to work in that environment so we did quite a bit of coaching around that and she said to me everything has changed she said the people around me have actually changed and i said well i think you've both changed i said you've changed how you perceive them you've changed how you react to them therefore they're changing their behavior based on your behavior. It's interesting, just like on the airplanes, you know, they say you need to put your own mask on first be before you can uh, put on somebody else's. And uh, that's what happened with you. You put your life mask on and uh, look at you, you're saving others, changing lives. And uh, yeah. they're going through this transformation as well. And it's really beautiful to hear that. Lisa, uh, is there anything else you'd like to share with uh, listeners you know just to say that for so long I held off I felt that how I was was how I was and there was nothing I could do about it everybody else seemed to be living a much more connected grounded confident life and if only I could be like that but hey ho I can't and to know that it doesn't have to be that way you get to choose how your life is going to be so if you're putting off getting support if you're putting off if you feel like this is just how I've got to live my life don't accept that you know if you're thinking about maybe getting some support or you think that you could be doing more in your life or embracing more in your life go for it really go for it because that's why i love coaching because i say to people i don't want to see somebody struggling for longer than they need to the earlier you can do this work the better there's always people out there who will support you and remember it's just small stepping stones if you think there's more out there for you there definitely is. And don't hold yourself back. All right. Uh, what's next for you, Lisa? Well, I'm currently actually doing some more CIPD training in leading learning and development because I'm quite keen to go back into the working environment because I think there's a lot of teaching can be done and learning to be taught in the career, in the working environment. Not necessarily, it doesn't have to be corporate, but I'm keen to go into organizations and to really build into the learning and development the importance of emotional intelligence. Yes, just like you said earlier, uh, even work is a relationship and it's a pretty big one because we spend a substantial part of our life with our working colleagues and in that environment. So there's definitely a relationship as well. And it can go through very positive transformations when you're in a good place in life with yourself. Sounds beautiful. We would like to bring you on board for the learning and development programs. Where could they find you, Lisa? So I'm normally on uh, lisamittenmentoring.com, but I'm struggling with my website at the moment. But you can always reach me on Instagram, Lisa Mitten Confidence Coach. 
You can get me on LinkedIn, Lisa Mitten, any of those platforms, reach out to me and I would be delighted to hear from anybody listening, watching and let's connect. Well, thank you for joining us and for sharing your experience today, Lisa. If you found our conversation valuable, please join and subscribe to our channel and keep an eye out for our upcoming interviews with coaches who share their experience, their journey and give you tips about how to grow in your personal and professional lives. With that, goodbye.